I think the, the biggest theme in, in dry bulk shipping are the supply constraints that exist. So all of the shipyards are full up with mostly tankers, container ships, and gas carriers. So in order to order a new dry bulk ship today, you're really talking about a delivery time of maybe 2026, and you have a very low order book. So there's just not a lot of new tonnage that is coming on the market, but yet you have a rising demand situation. So freight rates are continuing to firm, as we've seen in the, in the latter part of this year, and we expect uh, a similar pattern as we get into next year. And when it comes to those supply constraints and, and the low orders that you just mentioned, to what extent is that down to environmental regulation? I think that's a, a pretty big part of it. So, you know, right now, there is a question about what will be the fuel of the future. Will it be ammonia? Will it be methane? Mm. Or some combination of that and, and biofuel? So I would say most owners are reluctant to order conventional fuel mm. ships, which would normally have a 25-year life. But mm. let's face it, 20, you know, 20 years from now, I think we're going to be much closer to alternative fuels than using conventional yeah, fuels. Yeah, well, you know, our colleagues have been covering COP28 extensively the last couple yeah. of days. Is there anything that's coming out of COP that could be actually binding for the shipping industry? I mean, we know that shipping actually does account for a good chunk of CO2 emissions. I think it's something like 3% of yeah, global emissions. Three to, it's about 3 to 4%. Mm. And, and actually, shipping, I would say, is somewhat on the forefront. Back in July, IMO did set pretty definitive mm. targets for GHG emissions. So by 2030, there's a target of 20 to 30 percent reduction. By the time we get to 2040, it's 70 to 80 percent. And by 2050, our goal is to be net zero in mm. terms of GHG. So those targets actually have been set. That was done in July. It's nice to see it being mm -hmm. done ahead of COP28. Yeah. Let's go back to what you said at the beginning, that mismatch between supply and demand. Now, Juliana's question was about supply. I've got a question about demand because sure. you did mention a pickup demand in demand. Where is that coming from and what are the signals you've been getting out of China recently? So China is, um, is a mixed bag. Um, we have obviously heard a lot about the housing crisis. Our view is there still needs to be quite a bit of work done in, mm -hmm. in obviously fixing that and cleaning that up. However, the infrastructure spending has been moving and going forward. So we've seen iron ore imports up 7% year on year. Coal, both thermal but also coking coal for steel uh, production, mm. is up almost 50%. 50, 5-0. Five, zero. Five, zero. Wow. And the bauxite trade from West Africa has really picked up, which mm. goes into aluminum production. Mm. Mm.